This is the School Success Podcast, a podcast for school leaders to learn from other school leaders what's working and what's not, and to get inspiration and encouragement, as well as strategies to grow school enrollment, connect with families, retain teachers, recruit teachers, and everything in between. You guys are heroes, and I cannot thank you enough for pouring into this next generation that's coming behind us. My goal is you will take at least one thing away from every episode that you can take back to your school to make it better than it is right now. Please enjoy the School Success Podcast. Hey, School Success Makers, welcome to another edition of the School Success Podcast. I'm your host, Mitchell Slater, and I'm joined by a new friend out of the great state of North Carolina in the city of Raleigh, Kimberly Wilson. And she is the founder and head of school of Academy 31, which is a Christian school startup that's starting this fall in an all-girls Christian school, which we haven't had a guest on like that before. So I'm super excited for this interview and hearing about all the things she's been working on as they prepare for an exciting launch this fall. And uh, before we jump into that and I pass it off to her, I do want to highlight our amazing sponsors and friends over at America's Christian Credit Union. You guys have heard this spiel before, but they truly are awesome. And this year they're celebrating 65 years of service. And of course they are a credit union. They are not a bank and they are providing essential school banking services as well as an amazing tuition financing program for schools who are looking to reduce their risk and administrative burden. And the easiest way to explain that and to simple terms for you guys, if you're a school that is getting tuition from these families and you have a hard time maybe getting collection on time or you have to chase people this takes away that for you as a school where the families can then go to america's christian credit union get a finance a loan for the tuition and then you get your money as a school up front at the beginning of the year and then they work with the credit union throughout the whole year to pay their payments like they would for paying monthly tuition it's a great way for you as a school to take away that burden and you guys can just be like oh it's all handled by america's christian credit union and it doesn't cost you guys a thing so go check them out online america's christian cu.com forward slash schools that's america's christian cu.com forward slash schools all right well as we dive into today's episode i'm going to pass it off to kimberly to introduce herself so kimberly welcome to the podcast hi mitchell thank you so much i'm excited to be here and uh, excited to share with you about academy 31. we are in the process of launching this fall opening with grades six and seven and we are an all-female private christian middle and high school with a discipleship focus of training up godly young women of character and competence love it Love it. Well, as I obviously have some questions for you, but I always start with the same question for the guest. And I am very familiar with the North Carolina area, the RDU triangle that you're in, because my wife is from Durham, but I, I always have to ask. So if I was to come to Raleigh to visit, what would you say, Mitchell, you have to do this to get the full Raleigh experience when it comes to doing something as well as food? What would you say I have to do? Oh, wow. That's a great question. I think I'm, I've always been really into sports and it's summer right now. So I would say check out a Durham Bulls game if it were Hockey season, I would say check out the Hurricanes or college basketball is big around here as well. I think food wise, I don't know, Bojangles, chicken, get some fried chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Those are good. And I actually love Bojangles and we don't have it where I'm at here in South Florida. The nearest one's three hours north of us. And I'm like, anybody who's listening who's never had Bojangles before, it's the Cajun filet biscuit combo with a sweet tea and fries, Absolutely. even if it's 6 a.m. in the morning. That's the thing I'm getting. It's delicious. It's a great call. We'll so. never disappoint. Mm. <laughs> love it. Well, I would love to kind of hear about you first, just kind of your background and how you got to this point of like, boom, you're starting an, an all-female school that's going to start this fall. So how do, how did we get to this point, Kimberly? And then I'll have some questions for you about the school. Sure. Well, definitely by God's grace that I've, I've gotten to this point. And it's been an interesting journey, just full of God's faithfulness and twists and turns that, that looking back, you know, only the Lord could have ordained in terms of preparing and equipping me for this next season with Academy 31. But my last, I guess, almost 20 years now has been in Christian education, teaching all levels from pre-K up through high school, as well as administration at the high school and college level and biblical counseling. I have a huge passion for that and helping people with the resources of Christ, his indwelling spirit, the word of God that he's given us for guidance and hope to help people through the trials of life. So that's a, a lot of what my background has been. And about three years ago, I heard about a 
an amazing school called Iron Academy that is an all-male private Christian middle and high school here in Raleigh. I thought I knew of all the Christian schools in this area, had not heard of it, heard about it through a parent that had two sons that attended there. And um, I looked into it and found out, you know, that their emphasis is on discipleship and biblical manhood. And I thought that's just phenomenal and what an amazing need that they're seeking to meet through that. And so reached out, met with their founder and found out that, you know, they really had seen a need as well to have a similar type school for young women, but knew that it'd probably need to be a separate launch effort and uh, sort of stuck in the back of my mind. I was living out in California at the time and serving at a Christian university there, but the Lord ended up moving me back here to the Raleigh area, which is home for me. I have family here and the area is just exploding in population, growing very diverse and a lot of parents looking for alternative educational options for children. A lot of the larger Christian schools with wait lists and just as I prayed and, and circled back and met with Dr. Alan Hahn, who's the Iron Academy founder, just became you know clear that this was a time that the Lord had had, I guess, appointed for this opportunity to, to be able to get off the ground. So started laying the groundwork about a year and a half ago. And as I said, by God's grace, enrolling students for this fall. Wow. Wow. Well, obviously with starting a school, because we've had some startup schools on the podcast before, you obviously have some challenges, just like any other school that's been open for 20 years or just starting out. So I'd love to hear some of these challenges that you're currently kind of up against, or maybe some recent ones that you've had and how you're combating those challenges at the moment? Absolutely. There are certainly challenges and, and more and more every day, but the, the, the passion for the mission that the Lord's given us are, is, you know, sufficient to, to overcome those by God's grace. And I think the, the biggest challenge that we knew starting out would be funding. Obviously it costs money to start a school and I'm thankful, you know, that we have an amazing relationship with Iron Academy, the school that I mentioned for young men, and we'll be leasing facilities adjacent to theirs on a property that they own, where a church also meets, actually three church congregations meet there, which is neat. And everyone is has been incredible partners in being able to just maximize the potential of this location, which is central to Raleigh, Wake County, pulling from a pretty wide radius of families that are able to get there. So. We had a, a unique situation where we had access to facilities for an affordable price versus having to acquire land and build buildings. That was a huge advantage for us out of the gate, but knew that it'll still take probably five, six years before we can be self-sustaining through our tuition revenue, which is a, an end goal that we have such that after that point, our donor contributions could go directly toward need-based scholarships to make the school more accessible to every family who desires it. But to get to that point is a, is a journey for sure. And starting with very, very little in the way of funding or connections, it was a lot of just prayer and networking conversations, coffees, having, you know, people introduce me to other people that they know and, uh, and just trying to find those individuals who the Lord had blessed with, with means and a like-minded heart and passion to really, you know, believe in the mission, but also to see the vision of the school and, and what this could become for young women in our area. Love it. Well, with the challenges you already mentioned for for funding, I mean, you're not alone in that. Of course, there's plenty of schools that are, are struggling with that. Is that something that you are good at the moment in, or is there are, are still a huge need at the moment? I guess as you're approaching fall, is there something that you guys are working on? Already doing like fundraisers to try and meet meet a gap? How are you guys kind of handling that at the moment? Yes. So one conviction we had starting out, and this has come out of you know careful prayer and and, and reflection, but also out of experience and in, in the field of Christian education, that oftentimes ministries well intentioned can sort of run out ahead of the Lord sometimes and maybe presume upon provision that's that's not there yet. And of course, it takes faith for any ministry endeavor, but we we wanted to wait upon the Lord and his timing. And so we we chose to wait until we had sufficient funding to know that we could make it through that first year before we would start enrolling students. We wanted to be able to go to moms and dads and say, we're hundred percent going to open this fall. And we're asking you, know, you to enroll your daughter with, with that promise, regardless of funding or enrollment that comes from this point forward. And so Praise God, we, we cleared that hurdle. We had set a March 1st deadline this year to make that decision if we were going to push for another year or, or try to make this August. And the Lord came through and provided to meet that goal really within the last week of, of that deadline that we had, which was 
just tremendously answered prayer and so grateful to the very generous donors who, who stepped up and believed in this. And so that afforded us the opportunity to renovate the facility that we're leasing from Iron Academy. So we have really a, a beautifully renovated facility now and, and furnished and a place that we can bring families to tour and actually see what our school will look like and feel like. And so we started enrolling this fall, this spring for this upcoming fall. We're continuing to enroll through the summer. And in terms of the financial aspect, we absolutely, you know, still need funding and are still praying for the Lord's provision in that regard to supplement our, our budget as we grow. And uh, so we're thankful that we have, you know, what we need here going into first year to launch. But the next step is really now that we have that foundation is building that framework that's going to enable us to add a grade level each year. We're starting with sixth, seventh, as I believe I said, and then we're going to add a grade level each year until we get up to 12th grade through high school. So ongoing donations will enable us to continue to grow, build our staff and, uh, and add those grade levels. Love it. And have you had challenges with staff at the moment for this school that's launching? I mean, have you had trouble finding people and getting people to buy into the vision or has that been fairly easy? It's praise God. We, the teachers we've hired are phenomenal. I'm so excited. We have two full-time teachers that we're hiring a, a math science teacher in English social studies. I'm super excited to be teaching the Bible classes, starting out and putting that curriculum together as that's a huge passion that I have. We have a really unique biblical womanhood program that we're doing on Fridays. That's all about applying God's truth to all of life and taking everything we're learning in our core classes and really having discussion based times to apply that to current events, to issues and questions that the girls are dealing with personally, having speakers come in from the community, lots of volunteer support, people that we've talked to that would love to come in, women of God and share testimonies, do Q and A's with the girls, teach practical skills. And, and then have time for them to meet one-on-one -on -one with their faculty staff mentors. So I'm excited about the staffing we have there. We are still looking for an administrative coordinator, someone to be sort of my right hand and running the office. And uh, we've talked with several candidates and, and are just praying for the Lord to give wisdom in that. But that'll be our, our staff for first year. So relatively small staff, and then we'll build out from there year by year. That's exciting. Well, the challenges, they don't seem like they're keeping you guys down at all. So I love to hear that. And so I'd also then love to hear what's going really good. Give you a chance to just brag about what God's doing in your school and what's what's going on. I know you've shared a couple already, but I'd love to just hear if you had to pick a couple that you're like, hey, this is going really, really good for us. What would those be? Absolutely. I think the first thing that comes to mind, and I shared a little bit about this, is just our partnership with Iron Academy. So we are completely two, two separate distinct schools, and we are strongly committed to the value of that single gender educational environment. And I, this is something that had not previously been on my radar, as probably most people in Christian education, with the exception of, of maybe the Catholic tradition, have I've only ever been a student or a teacher administrator in co-ed Christian schools. And until I found out about Iron Academy, wasn't aware of all the advantages that are there in terms of the single gender environment, particularly for the middle and high school years. And so we've been able to learn a lot from the model that they have sort of put together and pioneered for young men. And it really minimizes distractions in the sense that a lot of times coming to the middle school, that awareness of the opposite sex can sometimes become the primary fixation in the classroom environment. And we know that boys and girls mature at different ages and different paces and also have different learning styles, different interests. And separating them out educationally at this age, particularly for young girls, allows them to focus academically, to really pursue and reach their full potential. A lot of times due to insecurities, there's reluctance maybe to speak up in class or to always be the one raising their hand or getting the A on the paper. And so putting them in an environment, an all-female environment, they have maybe more freedom to look into different academic interests that they have or different extracurricular interests, not thinking in terms of what's going to make me popular or allow me to fit in better, but they really have freedom to try a lot of different things, even fail in an environment that's encouraging and supportive. And, uh, and then socially really invest in those female friendships when they maybe lack the, the wisdom and maturity at the, the tender age of 11 or 12 to navigate those opposite sex relationships in a, in a wise and mature manner, they can really develop those close bonds with sisters in Christ instead of that 
in the comparison competition dynamic that we all remember from middle school to be in a really sweet environment with like-minded peers that are recognizing one another's strengths and weaknesses, but building one another up in the Lord and then having mentors around that are faculty and staff that really know them personally, love them, care about them, and are invested in really bringing out the best in them. And so that's something that Iron Academy has done well with young men. And we have learned a lot from their model, but also have the freedom and creativity to adapt that to young women. So I think that would be, you know, the first thing that's gone super well. And secondly, we have just phenomenal families that have come on board. Our parent support is incredible. I think this model has really struck a chord with the families that have, have found out about it and have jumped on board for year one. And so we could not be more excited about the young girls that the Lord has brought. They're literally counting down the days until they start in August, which is, is rare. Normally we're hearing about counting down the days left in school, not until school starts. So those are all blessings from the Lord that we're excited about. Awesome. Well, I want you to definitely be sharing on social media on those on those pages what how one how the summer goes, but also when it starts, just sharing what what you guys are up to and what you're doing because I do have a feeling that this is going to just grow. I mean, obviously that's what you expect. That's why I think it's going to happen every year. Obviously, you're going to have this grade, but I think as more people hear about it, I think it's going to just 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 catch fire in a good way and and, and grow because I feel like that's what's happened with Iron Academy. I believe is yes. what you had said, right? They're like booming, yes. I believe, yes. right? Their enrollment is is going really well right now, and just I went to their graduation last week, and just tremendous to see what the Lord's doing and the hearts and lives of the young men that are that are coming through that school and their families. And yeah, so Amen. We're we're praying for that and appreciate your prayers and encouragement for sure. Love it. And at the moment, is there still openings for this fall? If anybody's listening yes. and has family in the Raleigh area that might want to go? Absolutely. We are enrolling both rising sixth and seventh graders for this fall. And like I said, adding a grade level each year. So if you know any folks that are in this area looking for options for their daughter that are going to be educated and discipled and, and loved, a safe place for them to learn and grow, we would love to meet with them. They can go to our website, academy31.org and sign up for a free educational consultation and tour. I'd love to meet with them personally and, and share more about our school, learn more about their daughter and see how we might partner together. Love it, love it. Well, we always end with the last question, the final question, which is give you a chance to share a piece of advice with those school leaders that are listening. You got any, got any cool nuggets you've pulled out all these years that you can share with anybody? Oh, well, I believe, you know, first is just with all of the, you know, logistical details and, financial pressures and all the things that come with launching a school or leading a school, I think most important is just staying near to the Lord and and uh, and remaining focused on that mission and that vision that he has given you and and making as, as well as you can, especially if you're starting out, laying a solid foundation so that you're not putting yourself in a, pre in a pressure situation where you're going to be tempted more and more to compromise on maybe that mission and vision that the Lord's given you. So I think trusting that if it's the Lord's will and his timing that he's going to provide. And if, if not, there are delays and obstacles just to trust the Lord with that and not to run out ahead or push through, but just to, just to stay in tune with, with how the Lord's leading. Love it. Well, Kimberly, I love what you're doing and I'm excited for you and your school and Academy 31 to launch this fall. And I'm hoping it's at capacity. I hope there's a waiting list so that you guys just continue to max out every year. But I just I want to applaud you for, for following that call to start what you're doing. And I just pray that God will just fill that school and it'll be blessing tons of families and tons of these ladies that are going to be attending your school this fall. So huge shout out to you. Wishing you nothing but the best. And thank you for taking time to be on our podcast today. Thank you, Mitchell. appreciate you so much and all that you're doing to support Christian education as well. Well, another huge shout out and a thank you to Kimberly for taking time and being on the podcast today. I love the school that she is preparing to launch this fall. I'm wishing her and her school nothing but the best as they launch this all-girls school there in Raleigh, North Carolina. And hopefully you guys, as always, were able to take at least one thing away from today's episode that you can take back to your school to make it better than it is right now. And if you need some community in your life in that school sector, we would love for you to connect with us on our private Facebook group just for school leaders. It is called School Success Makers. Again, private group just for school leaders called School Success Makers. We'd love to see you in there. I'm personally in there, and I'd love to see you in there as well. We have some great resources for you. You can check out on our website, schoolsuccessmakers.com. That's schoolsuccessmakers.com. 
www.schoolsuccessreport.com. Go in there. We're launching a newsletter this fall called the School Success Report. We'd love you to put your email in there to sign up for that as we launch that. We have some really cool content coming down the pipeline for us later this year and all just around helping you school leaders be the best you can possibly be. So if you have any comments, suggestions, ideas on how we can make what we're doing better, please let us know. But as always, if you're loving this podcast, we'd love you to give us a good five-star rating. It helps us be able to create more content because it does take a lot of time, money, and resources to put this out. So we'd love a five-star review from you. And if you share any of these episodes with any of your friends that you think would be helpful for, that would be amazing for us as well. If you guys are approaching this fall and you are not at capacity as a school, I'd love to help you out to help you grow. Obviously, the, the company that I'm with specifically is Slater Strategies, where we help schools grow their enrollment and automate their application process. So if you're in a situation where you're not at capacity and you need to be, we'd love to hear from you and help you guys have an awesome and successful upcoming school year. So if you need to do that, you can reach out. Again, the way to get connected is through our website, which is slaterstrategies.com. You can check us out there, slaterstrategies.com. And if all else fails, just go to schoolsuccessmakers.com. Connect with us through there. And we'll make sure you get connected with the right people. But you guys are doing awesome. So keep up what you're doing. Enjoy your summer. And I'm wishing everybody nothing but the best in this upcoming school year this fall. But we'll be back here next week with another amazing guest as usual on the School Success Podcast. We'll see you then.